Castlevania Symphony of the Night is one of those absolute must-play classics that everybody raves about. That being said, there probably isn't much I can add to the discussion that hasn't already been said to death, so I'll just throw in my kazoo of personal thoughts into this symphony of intense discussion on this one. This 1997 hit by Konami follows the story of Alucard, Dracula's half-human son, who takes it upon himself to take down his father when Castlevania rises once again to take over the world. At this point, I must mention that I played the PSP port of this game as part of the Dracula X collection, though from what I understand, it isn't too much different from the original. The story of the game, much like the rest of the series, is a very basic let's save the world from evil plot. However, this game does throw a twist in by shedding some light on its main character, delving into Alucard's past, mostly about his human mother, and it helps you get at least a little more emotionally invested in the game. That being said, it still ends up being a pretty thin plot that's somewhat melodramatic, but the story was never the focus of these games anyway. No, Castlevania is all about the gameplay, and as all of you probably already know, this was the game to change the traditional side-scrolling Castlevania gameplay into the Metroidvania style of exploration with RPG elements. You navigate through this large castle, looking for new powers that help you advance, collecting items, gaining levels, and beating bosses. I enjoyed all of that, even though I usually hate games with mazes, and it feels like I'm playing a lot of those lately. The controls in this game are very tight, and Alucard has some nifty moves that changes it up from your usual Belmont, like a backdash, and he's just a lot of fun to control. It's also very satisfying to watch enemies burn up as you cut them down, feeling stronger when you gained a level, or finding a creative way to take down an enemy. It's a very crisp, short experience, probably not lasting more than 15 hours on one playthrough if you take the time to explore. And it's just very well paced all the way through. So yeah, in general, this is just a ton of fun and it's a very well designed game. However, I do have a few issues I want to point out. The first is that the menu screen has items that are really unorganized, so it can be kind of easy to lose what you need. I'll bet 50 bucks that the first comments here are going to be like, "Oh, you missed the sort item button, idiot, but whatever, I shouldn't have to do that, the game should organize it for me like Terranigma does. My second issue is how, if you want to get the good ending in this game, although you have to kind of go through a clever kind of thing to figure it out and get a better ending, there's very actually little in the game to indicate what you were supposed to do to get the better ending. But for the internet, I would have no idea how to get the good ending in this one, and this game would be like half as long basically. My final issue with this game was how easy it is. When I play a Castlevania game, I expect like a real challenge with bosses that will kick my ass at least once or twice. Here, the bosses really didn't feel like a challenge. Sure, there were one or two that gave me a rough time, but for the most part, there was certainly ways to kill them pretty easily, or an item that you equipped that made them a breeze, or something like that. There's like one or two bosses that gave me problems, but the others I don't even remember because the boss fight lasted like 30 seconds. Like even the final boss, Dracula, spoilers I guess, went down pretty easily and I didn't even have to grind. To be clear, these complaints aren't massive and most of them were solved by the sequels, I just think that it's kind of interesting to chat about what I didn't like because everyone knows how awesome this game is. Everything is so well designed and it's just a really fun game that when you do find something that doesn't work, it's just kind of easier to spot. The graphics in the game are excellent. What I respect most about this game is how it retained the 2D graphics in a 3D centric era, but only used the kind of 3D and improved capabilities of the PS1 for some cool new effects to the 2D. The game looks great. The different areas all have this creepy, interesting style, and the enemies of course are really really cool and fun to look at. Of course, the other place where the PS1 hardware really comes through is through the music. The music in the game is phenomenal, it's probably my favorite soundtrack in the series. Which makes sense since Symphony is in the title. 
There's really nothing more I can say about the soundtrack that the music doesn't say better. But, oh, I forgot, there's actually one more complaint I have about this game, and that's that they took out the original voice acting and actually made this voice acting half decent. Boo! Give me the cheesiness, you monsters! To conclude, Symphony of the Night is an absolute classic that still holds out today. I don't know if I would call it the best game in the series now, especially since some of the newer titles on the Game Boy Advance do improve on it, particularly Aria of Sorrow. I also don't know whether we should even compare it to the original side-scrolling games in the series. Really, this is a game that started its own side series in a way, in the Metroidvania style, and it's pretty interesting to ponder how this game stopped the side-scrolling titles of the original series, basically. Or did it evolve the series into the next generation? I'm not sure. It's a much talked about discussion in game in general, but in terms of just the game itself, it's a classic through and through that, of course, you need to give a shot. Thanks for watching.